Hello everybody and welcome back to the Hammerwatch Editor Tutorials. This tutorial will be covering scripting and I've went ahead and expanded the map for us to make it a little easier so you don't have to watch me putting down terrain. Okay, so the first thing we want to look at under our scripting tab is scroll down and find the level start script. Um, this one you want to just place down wherever you want the level or wherever you want your character to spawn in when the level is loaded. And um, your spawn location can be updated with these right here, which are under items, trigger button saves. You run into those during the campaign. And let's test out our uh, level start trigger. Save test. And I should spawn right on this little platform. And then if I go and die, which would take too long to show you guys, um, I'll respawn there unless I hit one of these save points, and then that'll designate my new spawn location. So I'm going to delete that. Alright, back to scripting. Okay, so here we go. Our first hallway, we have some archers, some bats, but we can make this a little harder if we added some projectile shooters off this wall. So look down scripting and find projectile shooter. And let's throw in a couple of these. Two, three, four, five would be good. Okay, now all these scripts you can edit at the same time if you grab them all, and they're all the same type of script. So they're all projectile shooters and so we can edit them all at the same time and let's set them all to a right direction projectile of a shooter fireball. So each of these will fire off fireballs that are four shooter traps which these are projectile shooter traps. And yeah so now these scripts will fire fireballs whenever they are triggered. Now to trigger them you have to have an event happen. Um, one of the events that is nice for a trap like this is a timer trigger, which periodically, um, based off of its frequency, will trigger whatever it's attached to. So let's place down a timer trigger, which is right at the very top, and its frequency, every thousand, is about one second. So let's set that for two thousand. So every about two seconds, these traps will fire once we connect this. So if you hold down Control-Alt, that's how you can attach, or once your tr timer trigger is selected, hold down Control and Alt and click on each projectile shooter. And that will attach it to them. Now, um, depending on what order you clicked, it um, attaches them. It, um, in this little pull down bar, you can edit your properties sending that are sent to each of those projectile shooters. And uh, depending on which order you clicked is the order that they're going to be listed here. So our first one at the very top, you can click on that and you can actually set a delay timer for it. Now since we have five of these and their frequency is every um, 200 clicks, let's say, um, we want to space them out to about every 400 clicks. Then that'll set up a nice little uh, wave pattern for us. So this first one we can just leave at zero. Oops. But let's go to the second projectile and set that to a 400 delay. And the next one we want 400 clicks after that. So let's go to the third one and set it to an 800 delay. Next one to a 1 200 delay. And the last one to a 1 600 delay. So now these are all going to delay by 400 clicks, and you'll see a nice wave pattern go through every cycle, of every two second cycle. All right, and that's it. Let's test and save it. Save and test it. <laughs> So we shoot through these bats, and there's our fire trap. Nice and easy. You only need one timer to govern it. Alright, and that's basically all that there is to do with projectile shooters. You can change them to arrows if you want to. I'll just do that. Next time I test it, you'll see that. Alright, let's move up here. Now I have a gate with guys inside of it, and a button right here. Now I want this button to open up these gates and allow passage way, or allow them to pass through to the next area. And this is the end of the level. Okay, so to do this we need a area, yeah, area trigger. So this area trigger will um, trigger or fire whenever somebody enters the area designated for it. Um, to designate an area, we have to create a shape, which if you look down, we can find rectangle shapes and circle shapes. Since this button is a rectangle, I'm going to put a rectangle shape on it. And to attach your area trigger to the rectangle area, we want to click down here on the shape. 
So now it's attached to that rectangle shape, and whenever somebody enters that shape, this area trigger will fire. And you press escape to get out of the selection mode. Let's move this over here. Now what do we want this to do? We want it to delete both of these doodads, and we want it to make a, make a sound like these gates are being opened. And we can also make another sound where this button is being clicked down. So let's throw in two play sounds. Now, now we have to attach this trigger to these sounds. So when this fires, it will, in response, fire both of these triggers as well. So control, alt, click, click. All right. Now let's set this first one to a gate noise, which somewhere in here. Info. Here. And the button hatch, which there's a couple different sounds for the button, which there's hatch, magic, and metal. What we're working with is a hatch button, so we want to click there. All right, you can click play sound and listen to it and see if it's what you like. And then every sound trigger has a option if, that you can um, play as 3D or you can loop it, which um, looping if, is if you want to make the sound play multiple times. And um, play as 3D if, is if you want um, the sound to play only within a certain radius of where this trigger is located. And so only certain players can hear it if they're nearby. Okay, so the next thing we want to add is a destroy object script to get rid of these gates. So let's attach our area trigger to that. Control Alt, click. And let's attach our destroy object and designate it, or designate the objects that it's going to destroy. You have to go down here and click on this object and click on those two doodads and then hit escape to get out of the selection menu. And all right, now that's connected to those and when this fires, it'll trigger this, which will delete those. Um, now the difference between these dotted lines and these um, solid lines is when this fires, it's gonna trigger everything that a, there's a solid arrow connected to. But it's not gonna trigger this area because you can't really trigger an area because it's not, it's not an event or an action. It's just an area. Um, so when it has a dotted line connected to it, that's usually just um, what it's referencing. It's not um, a triggering event. So it'll trigger these, but it's only referencing this area for knowing when it's going to fire. Same with this. It's only referencing these objects. It's not going to trigger these two objects. It's just referencing them. So that's the difference between the dotted and solid lines. Um, one more thing we want with this button is we want this uh, button to do uh, its uh, click-in animation which to accomplish that we want to click on change doodad state in our scripts and we'll attach that to there so we'll fire the change doodad state and what we want it to do is we want to change this doodad which we click on object and designate that and escape to get out of the selection menu and the state that we want to put it in is activate all right that button's pretty much all the way set up now let's save control shift t to test where we're located at and we'll click on our button. There we go. Did you hear, or I don't think you guys heard it, but there was a click. You could hear the gate noise activating, and the gates are open. The button's clicked. All right, so we've accomplished that. Um, one more thing that you want to pay attention to is this area trigger. Make sure that it's how many times you can trigger it is set to one. So you can't click that button multiple times, and so it keeps on making the noise of the gate opening, gates opening, and the button clicking. Um, with the fireballs, if uh, you only wanted them to fire 20 times, you could just set this trigger times to 20. And so the frequency would set this thing off, and this uh, amount of times that this thing can be triggered would count down from 20. And so that's only if you wanted 20 fireballs to fire, but we want it to just keep on firing constantly, as long as you're in the game. Okay. Um, on more advanced scripts, but for now this will... Um, Survice is a little stepping stone for you guys to get started with your own scripts. You can always just look around and place them down and see what they do. Um, but I'll start explaining um, more in depth of how basically every single one of these work in later tutorials. And um, I'll put together some more complex scripts that you see in the campaign and show you how those work. All right. Later. Defense, vendor, speech, defense. You just put